Welcome to my series of explaining how to answer history papers. In this one, I'll show you how to answer the part B of the Edexo IGCSE history paper one. And I'm doing this series because I got confused quite a lot when I was trying to find a good way to answer these questions myself as a student. So I finally found out the ideal way and I decided to make these videos so others can benefit. And just a short summary of what paper one is. I've explained this in further detail in my previous uh, video about part A. So if you want some more details related to the COVID-19 situation for the May, June 2021 exams, you can just briefly watch that video as well. It's linked at the top and it's below. So it's a component of the Edexo IGCSE history specification. It's known as the depth studies paper. Usually students must answer only two questions from this paper. And most importantly, only one extract is provided for each question. And here's just an example extract from Germany, uh, the development of dictatorship. So this extract, the examiners expect you to read it and study it. And part A is mainly concerned with this extract. Part B is not quite related to this extract. You don't really have to use it for part B. But I'm just showing you this extract to let you know that this is how it's going to come in the question for uh, in the question in paper one. Let's look at part B. Uh, in detail now so this is an example explain two effects of hyperinflation on germany so as you can see from this it's an eight marks question and since it's not like quite a lot of marks it's not 25 marks or something you should spend roughly 12 minutes on it so as to save more time for the longer answer which is to come which is part c which i'll make a video on later on and it's also known as the two effects question. That's what people mostly call it. And um, I'm just telling you what it's called so that later on you can remember this. When you think of part B, you'll think of it as the two effects question. And it's easier to remember what it assesses if you think of it in this way. So you'll know that part B uh, requires you to uh, give two effects of an event or a situation, etc. So over here, they're asking us to explain two effects of hyperinflation on Germany so you can choose any two effects they haven't given any recommendations so it's up to you but these two effects should be valid and in order to make sure that your answer is perfect you must use peel now you might be wondering what is peel well it's quite simple actually P stands for point E stands for evidence, the second E stands for explanation, and L stands for link. You might have heard of PEE before, but PEEL is a bit different because the, it includes a link, and I'm going to explain this further later on in this video. So first of all, let's talk about the point and how the point is going to be incorporated in your answer for part B. So you might be wondering, what do you do with peel? Like, how do I use it in my answer? It's a little confusing or it might be a bit vague at first. So don't get confused. It's OK. I'll explain. Number one, your answer should consist of two paragraphs. This is very important. You should divide your answer into two sensible and logical paragraphs. This is because the question requires us to identify two effects. So thus two paragraphs. Number two, most important point, is that each paragraph should represent one point slash one effect. So your point is basically the effect. You have to give a point, and that point is the effect of the event. So as you know, we're required to explain two effects. So each of your paragraphs will focus on one point or one effect. I hope you understand that. I'll just give you an example now. When you make your point, you can, you know, write it in a way like this. For example, hyperinflation in Germany was one of the reasons why the Weimar Republic was eventually overthrown. So this is one way you can make your point in the beginning of the paragraph. It's very important to make your point in the beginning of the paragraph immediately so that the examiner knows what you're trying to talk about, which effect you're trying to explain. You must not leave it vague and try to mention your point later on in the paragraph because that's not good at all. So this is one way you can write the uh, point or the effect. Another way is to be more direct about it. So you can just write it in this way. One consequence of hyperinflation or one effect of hyperinflation in Germany was that the Weimar Republic was eventually overthrown. So there are many ways to write the opening point uh, or effect, whatever you want to call it. and 
it's up to you to choose the way you want to start it, but I would recommend that you include the word effect or consequence in your answer or at least something like reason or cause or something. Okay, not cause because that doesn't make sense. You can't include a cause. That, that was totally by mistake. I mean, it's an effect, so it can't be a cause. Okay, I'm sorry for that. But anyway, I hope you get what I mean. You can basically write it in whatever way you want, but the way you write it should be understandable and should convey immediately to the examiner what you're trying to uh, focus on, what point or what effect you're trying to explain. Number two, you must give evidence. So, for example, the evidence for the previous statement which I made could be that people blamed the government for signing Versailles and accepting the reparations payment. So this is an evidence that hyperinflation in Germany was blamed on the government, therefore causing the Weimar government to, over, uh, to be overthrown eventually. So this is an example of an evidence. Now, over here there isn't any statistics or dates, but it's best to include as much statistics dates, events, names of people as you can because it shows that you have information of your own. Over here, I did not give an example that includes all of this, but I hope you understand that it's very important to include this information. An abbreviation for this is SPEND, so statistics, places, events, names, and dates. These are all very important and you must include them in your evidence. Over here, you can see an example of events treaty of versailles was sort of like an event where um, the reparations were uh, imposed on germany now another way to write the same thing would be an evidence of this is that people blame blamed the government for signing versailles and accepting the reparations payment uh, terms so this is a very direct way as i said previously you can either write it the first way or you can uh, be very direct in your answer and say that I'm providing evidence by saying, you know, an evidence of this, etc. Okay, so after this, you must be sure to explain what you mean by your point in your evidence, i.e. what does your evidence prove? What does it mean? So, for example, so when Germany failed to keep up those payments and had to print money to make any payments, the resulting hyperinflation was blamed on the Weimar government. So now you're linking your evidence to your point. So how it basically links and makes sense in relation to your point. So your point was that hyperinflation in Germany was one of the reasons why the Weimar government was eventually overthrown. You gave evidence for that. Now you're explaining how your evidence proves your point by saying that when Germany failed to keep up those reparation payments, etc., the resulting hyperinflation due to um, the those payments was blamed on the Weimar government, and this explains exactly what you mean. It's a very, very good sentence, and it will get you marks because you're clearly explaining what you're trying to convey. The last point, which most of you might not know because most people are used to PEE, but this one, which I'm explaining, has a twist to it. It has L as well, which stands for link, as I mentioned previously. So that means that you must link your evidence and your explanation back to your point. And overall, it should connect to the question. It should reflect how this information of yours is an effect of the event. So how it is an effect of hyperinflation. For example, so when the Wall Street crash came in 1929 and the economy collapsed again, people remembered the economic chaos in the hyperinflation years and turned to extreme parties, thus causing the Weimar Republic to fall. So this is a summarizing, concluding statement for the paragraph in which the student is um, explaining and linking his, you know, evidence and explanation back to the point and, you know, just summarizing how this caused the Weimar Republic to fall. That was his effect or that was his point. His point was that the Weimar Republic fell or was overthrown due to the hyperinflation. And now he's linked all of this information, all of his, you know, evidence back to the point that he was making. And this is really good. It's very important. Now, I'll just show you an example answer over here. So this is paragraph one. As I said previously, there have to be two paragraphs in your part B answer, which is for eight marks. So this is just the first paragraph. And this is an example of a very perfect paragraph, which will get you a level three, which is the highest for part B. So it's going to get, get you like upper level three. And um, I'm not going to go into much detail about what level three is and the marks for it. 
So you can check that out in the specification and the history subject guide, which are both linked below if you are studying for IGCSE history. And so let's just get into it. As you can see, it doesn't look very good because I wanted to highlight it and the colors. Just never mind the colors, but let's get on. So green basically is the part where he makes his point. This is what we discussed previously. Hyperinflation in Germany was one of the reasons why the Weimar Republic was eventually overthrown. Then the student goes on to give evidence. People blamed the government for signing Versailles and accepting reparation terms. Then he explains it. So when Germany failed to keep up those payments and had to print money to make any payments, the resulting hyperinflation was blamed on the Weimar government. It wasn't overthrown immediately, though Hitler did try because Strassmann was able to introduce measures which ended hyperinflation and restored stability. So all of this is his explanation and then the concluding statement as I said previously, I'm not going to read it again. So this is basically an example of a very perfect and you know good answer and you can read it yourself if you wish to but by now I'm sure you've understand uh, you, um, but by now I'm sure you've understood how to like overall structure a very good paragraph. Now a new thing that I'm going to do in this video is show you a paragraph which is not so good. So this is paragraph two. Now I'm going to repeat this because I feel it's very important to remember you must have two paragraphs in your entire answer B, part B, whatever you want to call it, which is for eight marks. You can't just write one paragraph or one effect, okay? That's not going to get you marks. And so this is just paragraph two, which is supposed to be the next effect of hyperinflation, but it's not a perfect answer. So this is because even though, as you can see, he makes his point in the first line, another consequence of hyperinflation was that prices rose very steeply in Germany. The evidence that he gives is not that accurate and not very relevant. So he gives evidence, but it's not very accurate in the sense that it hasn't been explained that well and it's not being portrayed as uh, being linked to the point quite so well, as in he hasn't been able to explain his evidence and even the evidence he gives is not that relevant or accurate so that's why this is not as good a paragraph as the previous one especially because the wording the way he's written it doesn't convince the examiner that you know this evidence is linked to your point and that this is a very you know accurate effect or consequence of hyperinflation because as you can see, he ends it by saying life must have been very difficult, which is very off point and doesn't make sense. You must, as I said previously, include a link back to your point and explain how everything is linked back to your point. But he does not do that. So this will come under a level two answer. And overall, because of this, the answer will only be given a lower level three. So total in total, it's going to be a lower level three answer. Even though the first paragraph was very good, the second paragraph wasn't. So he's going to get a lower level three, not an upper level three. So the student is not going to be getting full marks. This is why it's very important to, you know, structure both of your paragraphs very good and in the same way so that you achieve full marks if that's what you're headed for. And that's all. If you are still confused after watching this video and don't remember much, well, here are some small important points to remember and here are some small points. Number one, spend only 12 minutes on this part of paper one and please use relevant and accurate information in your answer. Again, spend statistics, places, events, names and dates. Then you should not forget to use the peel method, which I described throughout this video. And you should precisely mention two effects in your answer, not one. Don't just explain one effect in two paragraphs. No, one effect in one paragraph, the other effect in the other paragraph, and overall mention two effects, not one. So that was it. I hope you understood how to answer part B. I'm going to make another one on part C soon. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching.